Okay, this was this was just a, an exercise in this in this model, if you like, uh, but it has this profound consequence that our algorithms that we've seen are actually best possible. Now, in this next subsection, I want to show you that a lower bound is always both. It's an impossibility result and a pointer to where to poke your finger to improve beyond it. So you can sometimes break lower bounds. Um, but um, uh, not in the sense that the mathematical statement would be wrong. Uh, it's in the sense that you have to circumvent step outside of the model. The statement really formally just says any comparison-based algorithm has to take at least that, so it has to take time in omega n log n because it has to spend at least n log n uh, comparisons. And so the rest can't get cheaper. Uh, but what if we escape this comparison-based model? Now, we haven't seen an example. We've looked at, at quicksort and merge sort, and they were both comparison-based. They don't really do anything else with the elements. What else could we do? Let's suppose, for the sake of the argument, we sort some, some specific type, like integers, which is something we, we can do a lot with. We can add them up, we can compute averages, that's something I alluded to earlier. Uh, and there's other things, like the, the word RAM, it's not something we'll dive into much, but you can, the word RAM supports bitwise operations, bitwise AND, using the individual bits, uh, the digits of the binary number. If that helps you with sorting, uh, go ahead. Um, so if, if we do that, we are outside of the comparison-based model, and the lower bound above says nothing. There's no, no statement. Now, if you think about this for a while, you may come to the conclusion that this, all this arithmetic trickery with integers may not help so much for sorting. But you can use something else on the word RAM, which is uh, arrays. And uh, more specifically, using indices that you compute it. So remember what we said about quicksort and merge sort? They all just use sequential access. So all we ever did with the indices of our array was plus one and minus one. So increment and, and decrement. Move them around like, like they were pointers in some other data structure. They could have really used, by and large, they could have uh, applied to a, a linked list as well. Now, we can also do more on the word RAM. And here's an algorithm that exploits that fact. It's called counting sort, for obvious reasons that will become clear in a second. Uh, it has an important parameter that will restrict its usefulness, but will actually find a good use for this, exactly this algorithm later in this module. So the parameter is the size of these numbers. So we assume that we have an upper bound. It's OK, on the word RAM, it's all positive. This is all natural numbers. So there's some range from 0 up to some largest possible integer. This is quite natural. If you, re if you remember, we had a, a word size. So uh, we often work with binary numbers. So it's just the number of bits is, is, is limited. Uh, and the word, the, the word RAM had this this word size w bit in one, uh, one word that you could compute with in constant time. So that's, that's just the assumption of the algorithm. And now any, any concrete input will always have a largest number. The question is for the asymptotics, if I make the list longer and longer, does this range of the numbers grow with the length of the list? And if so, how? Um, We'll come back to that a little bit. OK, woof, there's the algorithm. Uh, I think the, the idea is explained in words on the side. So before we read the code, counting sort essentially has a counter for each possible value of these integers. And there's only u different, different values they, that we can have. So I can just count how often each number occurs. And then I can produce the sorted list by just writing the numbers uh, from the smallest to the largest. OK. Now in code, um, I, I spelled out the code not because it's very complicated, but to make explicit where we are actually using the word RAM power. 
and we're using this for the, for the counter array. So we have an array of, of counters, initially zero. Then for each element in the list, we increment one counter, and which counter? Well, the counter representing the element itself. So we use the element in the array as the index, or the offset in the array. That's where the word RAM uh, magic is used, where the power of the word RAM is used. And once we have all the counts, we iterate through the possible numbers and produce uh, as many copies of the number as we want. If these are just integers, you, you can do it like that. Uh, an alternative version keeps a list of the elements uh, that had this, this value. OK, let's, let's analyze how long this takes. With, you, with the code written down, it's actually not hard. Each individual step, let me go inside the loop first. So this, this step is a single addition and two memory accesses. So that's constant time. And we do the whole loop n times. So that's theta of n times. Now inside of here, this, this statement by itself is again just a, a constant number of steps. Now we do this a bunch of times, namely c of k. That's a little, little complicated. But then overall, we're uh, having a loop that is at most executed uh, u times. But then inside the loop, we have an additional contribution. Uh, the trick here is to not treat each of these inner loops in isolation, because we don't know what c of k is. That's the count of some number we, we don't know. But we know the sum of all the c of k. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll write this down here. So it's u plus the sum of all these terms and those range from 0 to u. Now we know that this sum must be n because we counted occurrences in the array and there were n numbers to start with. And so that's why um, you get this this time, which, as you may notice, there's no n log n in there. Um, and uh, in particular, if the range of the numbers is not much bigger than n, it's only a constant times n, or well, bounded by a constant times n, then the overall running time is, is linear. So we can sort n numbers in linear time, even though a comparison-based algorithm would not be able to do it. It would need n log n time. Now, uh, there's a small caveat I want to mention, at least. There's, there's the assumption in this analysis we're assuming that all these little computations in here happen in, in constant time. So that means the numbers have to fit in, in one word. So we have to be able to work with all the numbers that occur in one word operation. Questions on this? The algorithm is super simple. I mean, it, it has one big drawback, uh, which is also listed here. If u is big, it uses, it uses space linear in the number of uh, possible values for the counters. That can be huge, right? Uh, fair enough. Uh, as a theory result for now, we'll just leave it as this. Uh, and in this, in this domain below, when u is really small, that's just like another buffer ar array it's the same size of, as the array, roughly. That's what your merge sort used too, so um, maybe that's fair. OK, for this slide, um, before we uh, look at this, that's not part of the exam. It's for your inspiration, if you want. Now. Uh, it's always a, a question, do you say this before or after you discuss something? If you say it before, people stop listening. If you say it after, people are like, <laughs> oh god. So uh, I, I went for the, for the version of, um, yeah, well, you've, you've seen what I meant. Uh, the first bit is 
is relevant because it's not too hard, even though we won't use that in much detail. We've seen counting sort, which works fine if u is roughly n, okay? Uh, but you can pump up from there to something if, if u is n to the 10th. Uh, n to the 10th space is probably not doable, uh, but you can do this in rounds using radix sort. So you, uh, radix sort is the algorithm that comes out of this. I won't go into detail, but you basically apply this um, on chunks of the numbers and it still works. And so you can still get linear time as long as this, this exponent is constant. Um, that's something worth knowing, but not super relevant for the rest of this module. Now, um, theoreticians were, of course, uh, piqued by this, this discrepancy. So we can sort some lists of integers in linear time. In the general case for comparison base, we need n log n time. We can sort it in linear time if the integers are really small. So what happens in between uh, if the integers are, are slightly larger? Uh, and so um, what people looked at is suppose the universe is as big as what can fit in one word, okay? Uh, but the word size can be some function of n. So again, that's, that's the standard word RAM assumption. Usually w is log n, but here we lift that. We say w can be any function of n. Uh, and so then we can ask how fast is sorting on the word RAM if we're sorting integers that fit in one word. Uh, the standard type of word RAM assumption where the word size is roughly logarithmic in the input size, we can actually do sorting in linear time using radix sort just uh, from the first bullet. If conversely the word size is substantially bigger than logarithmic, so this is log n to the power 2 plus something, 2.1. Then again, you can do it in linear time using a, a completely different and fairly complicated algorithm. Um, if I remember correctly, I think that the trick is that you're packing several integers into one word, into one big number, and use them as a, essentially do something like these SIMD instructions. Uh, single instruction, multiple data, vectorized uh, operations. Uh, stuff like this you, could, you can also do on the word RAM. Now for W in between, uh, we don't really know. There's some uh, really absurdly complicated randomized algorithm that gets to this, this really interesting runtime. It's when the runtime's so weird, the algorithm must be, must be somehow weird as well. And we don't really know if that's best possible. So it's, it's it's striking that it's linear time for the other parameter choices and not, not clear in between, and we're far from, as far as I know, far from proving anything. Either a, a lower bound that it's not possible in linear time or some algorithm achieving it. All right, um, for the few of you who found that really uh, exciting, uh, that's as far as the state of the art goes for integer sorting. Uh, for the rest, wake up time again. Um, there's some more to come. No, I think this is a good, uh, right, yeah. For the rest of this unit, you can, you can forget about this bit. And we'll actually step back to the comparison model, basically because um, you're not always sorting integers. Um, and sorting is more versatile if you can apply it to all sorts of objects. Right, right, right. Okay, I almost forgot about this one. I love that question. It summarizes nicely everything I told you so far today. And after that question is a very natural point for a break. That didn't work. It's the connection again. Um, try this here.
41. And I'll wait for 50 again, 43. Fifty. <laughs> oh, come on. Doesn't like me today. So, a bunch of votes. Um, can I show the... Ah. No, no, it went through. All right. Uh, briefly, have a look at that. So we've just looked at counting sort. That's, that's that bit. Um, we can also do it in n log n time. It's just uh, just slower, right? Um, now the other, the last one is is in a way maybe also correct. Uh, if you don't if you don't say in detail what the operations on your computers are, uh, and uh, there's another problem is is the space, and that's why this. Um, this first one is a little tricky. The difference between the first and the second one is just that the second is only asymptotically true. So you allow some, uh, some limiting process. The first one would have to be true also for very small n. So why is the first one not true? The algorithms we've seen so far, they need space in terms of u or at least uh, some, some function of u to initialize the counter arrays. And uh, if your list is really tiny, but the, um, the arrays, the, the universe is big, you cannot do it in time proportional to n. You can do it in time theta n plus u, right? Uh, and so it's a bit... <laughs> The question is whether this proportionality factor may depend on 2 to the 64 or not. Uh, it's a bit, yeah, if, if the word size is fixed, um, I'm not sure if, you can, if I can formally justify striking that through. Uh, if, if proportional is supposed to mean some small constant, then, then no. Question? Oh, just use merge sort. Yeah, so uh, you can sort integers with this comparison-based method. Um, in, in a way, C is just a, a weaker requirement. So if you can do B, you can also do C. Um, that, that follows from that. Okay, so it's, the trickery here is asymptotics become complicated if you have more than one variable. You have to say exactly what happens with all the variables as n goes to infinity.